Sewage leaks, possums in the press box, and an outdated stadium that felt more like a relic than a home for Major League Baseball. That was the Oakland Coliseum, a venue so neglected that even the A's ownership had enough. Now, they're heading to Las Vegas, where a $1.75 billion, 33,000 seat, retractable roof stadium is set to rise on the strip. A 290 meter long structure with the largest cable net glass window in the world. A climate controlled field and luxury seating that redefines the fan experience. But with just nine acres to build on, how do they fit a world class stadium into such a tight space? For years, the Oakland Athletics Stadium situation was a ticking time bomb. The Oakland Coliseum, once a proud home for legends like Ricky Henderson and Reggie Jackson, had become the laughing stock of Major League Baseball. A stadium where raw sewage flooded clubhouses, a place where possums had taken over the broadcast booths, a venue so outdated that even minor league parks were starting to look like luxury resorts in comparison. MLB took notice. In May 2021, the league officially gave the A's permission to look elsewhere if they couldn't secure a new stadium deal in Oakland by 2024. The city had been trying to hold on to the team, but every proposed stadium deal hit a wall. Their last ditch effort? A flashy waterfront ballpark at Howard Terminal, collapsed in April 2023 after years of negotiations went nowhere. That's when the A's shifted their focus to Las Vegas. The city had already lured the Raiders from Oakland, built a hockey empire with the Golden Knights, and was becoming a sports mecca. By May 2023, the team announced they were moving forward with a $1.6 billion stadium right on the Las Vegas Strip. And this wasn't just any stadium. This was a state-of-the-art engineering marvel designed to redefine the baseball experience. But could they actually pull it off? A massive stadium in the middle of the Vegas Strip, built on a tiny nine-acre site? Let's break it down. Vegas isn't a city that plays it safe. If there's a way to make something bigger, flashier, and more expensive, they'll do it. And this new MLB stadium, it checks all the boxes. Designed by Bark Angels Group, BIG, and HNTB, the stadium's architecture is straight out of the future. At 290 meters long and 90 meters tall, the stadium will dominate the Strip's skyline, right next to three brand new 150 meter hotel towers that will house over 3,000 luxury rooms as part of a larger entertainment complex. This retractable roof is the stadium's crown jewel. It's a five-layered overlapping structure inspired by the Sydney Opera House. The design allows for a mix of open air and climate-controlled baseball, giving fans an outdoor experience without turning them into human toast in Vegas's 40 degrees Celsius summer heat. The stadium will be fully climate-controlled, featuring an advanced air circulation system that will cool the field and seating areas without blasting energy at unsustainable levels. Think of it as a combination of shaded cooling and directional airflow, similar to Allegiant Stadium, but customized for a baseball setting. But let's talk about the glass wall. The stadium isn't just locking fans inside a dome. It's giving them a massive 5,500 square meter cable net glass window that overlooks the Las Vegas Strip. That's roughly the size of an entire football field made of glass. Whether you're watching the game or just soaking in the view, it's a spectacle. Inside, 33,000 seats will surround the field, making it the smallest stadium in MLB history. But smaller 
doesn't mean worse. The design focuses on intimacy and premium seating, ensuring fans feel closer to the action than in traditional ballparks. No nosebleed seats, no bad sight lines, just a tight, energetic stadium that puts every fan in the middle of the action. And then there's the video screen. A 1,670 square meter curved LED display wrapping around the roof's interior. This will be MLB's largest video board, giving fans crystal clear replays, stats, and entertainment no matter where they sit. The field itself will be fully retractable, allowing for a natural grass playing surface that can be moved in and out of the stadium to maintain perfect conditions. It's the same technology used at the Arizona Diamondbacks' Chase Field and the NFL's Allegiant Stadium, ensuring real grass in the desert without the usual wear and tear issues. And what about access? The stadium is right in the middle of one of the busiest areas in the world, so getting in and out needs to be seamless. The venue will be connected to the Las Vegas monorail, with additional pedestrian walkways leading to nearby hotels and casinos. But how much is all of this costing? And who's paying? Here's where things get tricky. The stadium was originally set to cost $1.5 billion, but as construction costs climbed and additional features were added, that number has now ballooned to $1.75 billion. And if history tells us anything, that price tag could still go up. So, where's all this money coming from? It's a mix of private and public funding. The bulk of it, $1.1 billion, is coming from athletics owner John Fisher's family, making it one of the largest private investments in a stadium in MLB history. The state of Nevada is also chipping in $380 million in public funds, a decision that sparked plenty of debate. Some argue that tax dollars shouldn't be going toward a billionaire's stadium, especially when that money could be used for infrastructure, education, or housing. Others believe the stadium will drive massive economic benefits, bringing in tourism revenue that far outweighs the initial investment. On top of that, the A's have secured $300 million in loans from financial giants U.S. Bank and Goldman Sachs ensuring that construction can move forward. But there's still a missing piece, $500 million in additional funding, which Fisher is trying to secure from private investors. That's a big question mark. If that money doesn't come through, will the team have to make cuts to the stadium's design? Will they have to take on more debt? These are the risks that come with such a high profile move. Beyond the financial details, this move cements the A's as the most relocated team in MLB history. They started in Philadelphia, moved to Kansas City, then settled in Oakland, and now they're heading to Las Vegas. And here's the real gut punch for Oakland fans. For the first time in over 60 years, the city will be left with no major professional sports teams. The Warriors went to San Francisco, the Raiders bolted for Vegas, and now the A's are following them out the door. Construction is scheduled to begin in spring 2025, a tight turnaround considering the size and complexity of the project. If everything stays on track, the stadium is set to open in early 2028, just in time for the MLB season. But with a $1.75 billion project on a tight timeline, anything could happen. Until then, the A's need a place to play. Instead of staying in a half-empty, crumbling coliseum, they'll temporarily relocate to Sutter Health Park in Sacramento, the home of the AAA River Cats. They'll play there for at least three seasons, from 2025 to 2027, with the option to extend into 2028 if stadium construction isn't finished on time.
The Oakland Athletics relocation saga has been filled with controversy, heartbreak, and high-stakes financial maneuvering. But in just a few years, they'll step into a stadium unlike anything baseball has ever seen. A futuristic, climate-controlled, retractable roof ballpark in the middle of the Las Vegas Strip. But will it work? We'll find out soon enough. If you liked this breakdown, hit that like button, drop a comment, and don't forget to subscribe for more updates on the biggest worldwide mega projects.